This is Duke University. Global trade and environmental Being justice. Struck Human rights China issues today. are still... The term Ubuntu. Not the Alien and Sedition Act. He's making inferential discoveries. The importance of an archive. The John Ho Franklin Center. So Mexico is a federation, 31 states, 2,500 municipalities approximately. 800 of them, that's one third, are indigenous. That's where you have that's where you find indigenous populations. So the sample that I'm working with is those 800 municipalities that at any time between 1970 and 2000 had at least 10% indigenous population. So what's there, what's behind that, be behind this, this time series? Uh, well, you have lots of demonstrations, you have marches, uh, meetings, sit-ins, you have hunger strikes. Uh, these are for the most part peaceful events. Uh, uh, what you have here is uh, the occupation of uh, uh, government offices. Uh, what you have here is the occupation of land, the illegal invasion of land, uh, and sometimes you have the lynching of uh, local authorities. But uh, for the most part, what you have here is the kind of demonstration I show you in the first image. There's lots of variation within Mexico, uh, as it always happens when you analyze and when you unpack any cycle of protest. Uh, this idea that we have that everyone in the country uh, uh, just takes to the streets. This is just an image of all the municipalities in Mexico. These are just the roughly approximately 100 municipalities that took part, actively took part of this cycle of protest. Of course, if we only analyzed those places where we saw protest, we would have a huge bias. That's why we analyze the places where you have no protest and those in which you had different levels of protest. Uh, for the most part, what you see is that protest uh, centered in the south, uh, southern states of uh, Chiapas and Oaxaca, and uh, the central parts of uh, the country. Uh, what do we know about indigenous protest in Latin America? Uh, it's not only Mexico that experienced a major cycle of, of, of rural indigenous protest. Uh, we also saw protest in Guatemala. We saw protest in Bolivia. We saw protest in Ecuador, parts of Colombia, parts of Brazil. Uh, there was a major wave of, uh, uh, of indigenous protest in Latin America in the last quarter of the 20th century. What we often hear is what I perhaps uh, uh, would call uh, the avatar hypothesis, which is uh, how do we explain dominant explanations of, of, of uh, indigenous protest pretty much tell us that the penetration of, uh, uh, of, of uh, markets, the penetration of capital uh, in rural indigenous regions uh, uh, provoked uh, the reaction of indigenous communities to contest, to contest the spread of uh, multinational corporations or the introduction of markets. Uh, one of the major claims is that uh, neoliberal economic reforms, say in Mexico in 1992, triggered this cycle of protest. The second main claim that, that you often hear is that it, it wasn't just the introduction of uh, neoliberal economic reforms, uh, but also the introduction at the international level of, uh, of, of a new system of indigenous rights uh, that facilitated protest. If you bring these two arguments together about globalization, most people usually say that it was the introduction of markets and the introduction of a new international indigenous rights what triggered and facilitated, facilitated this, this cycle. Uh, this provided the motive, and this provided uh, the framing uh, to claim indigenous rights in the streets. Now, if you look at this time series in, 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 in a very simple way, if the origins of this cycle of protest are explained by these major transformations, we, we would not be able to explain more than a thousand uh, protest events that took prior to the introduction of neoliberal reforms and to the, intro to, to the introduction of uh, indigenous rights. What I want to suggest uh, in the next uh, uh, 25 minutes or so is that uh, there's other factors that uh, help us explain the origins of this cycle of protest. And what I want to do with you is, is, is to move you into politics a bit uh, and into religion. And let me just start by saying when, when we analyze a cycle of protest, we have to understand what, kind, what type of political regime uh, is hosting this type of protest. So Mexico experienced a transition from roughly a single party autocracy to democracy in the last quarter of the 20th century. And one of the most important uh, reforms that took place 
uh, at the beginning, uh, uh, in, in, in the mid-1970s, at the beginning of the cycle, uh, is that uh, Mexico's single-party autocracy, the PRI, introduced uh, multi-party competition. Now, what's key here is that prior to this reform, many parties, including the Communist Party uh, and the extreme right, were banned from competition. But after that reform, everyone was allowed to compete. Now, why do we call that still an autocracy? Why do we call that, call that a multi-party electoral autocracy? Well, the key here is that uh, although everyone was allowed to compete, uh, the government and the PRI kept control uh, over the organization of elections. So we call these electoral autocracies or hybrid regimes, and these are regimes in which elections are neither entirely free nor completely fair, but no one is banned from participating. So uh, these are cases uh, that you hear these days. Venezuela is a prominent case. Russia is another prominent case. But uh, uh, if you look at uh, 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 many of the sub-Saharan African cases, you have lots of electoral autocracies. In North Africa and the Middle East, you still have lots of electoral autocracies. So uh, countries don't transit just from autocracy to democracy. There's many regimes in the middle that organize uh, different types of elections, that adopt different types of uh, 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 federal systems, di different uh, types of uh, power-sharing agreements. And that's absolutely crucial to understand uh, cycles of protest. Produced by Duke University. Online at duke.edu.